So now we're over in Lightroom and we're gonna evaluate a couple of images. We'll come back to the image we just reviewed in a moment, but I wanna show you an image of blue sky to show you one of the challenges with reviewing the histogram in Lightroom. And that is the histogram on your camera has been designed by the camera manufacturer for that specific camera. It's very, very precise. Adobe doesn't have that luxury. When they create their histogram, it has to work for all cameras. So the clipping warnings on Adobe Lightroom are not going to tell you the same thing they're going to tell you on a camera. So you need to understand that difference. It's not the same histogram. Here's an example of a shot that I deliberately overexposed and took a bracketed sequence of shots of this blue sky to, to find out where is the point where I start to lose quality. So the actual image, if I undo my exposure adjustment, looked almost white in the camera. This is very, very overblown, but the sky is a very similar tone. And in this image, what I did was I darkened it down here, 2.65 stops. So two and two thirds stops to get to a blue that we could evaluate on the computer. And what I've done here is taken this bracketed sequence of seven images. Each of them is one third stop brighter than the one before it, but I've made exposure adjustments so that they all come back to the same value. So when I look at this next exposure, I have a minus three correction because it was one third stop brighter than the previous exposure. So notice this is one fiftieth of a second corrected by two and two thirds. This is one fortieth corrected by three stops. So they are giving the same final result here in Lightroom. And as long as we haven't blown the highlights, we should see the same result. And these look like the exact same blue to me. I go to the next one here. At 1 30th of a second, it looks like the same blue. Now this is the point in the camera where the camera's histogram warned me this would be the last good shot. The very next shot, I started to get warnings about clipping. So let's take a look at this. This next shot, we do in fact see a significant degradation in the quality. Look how the blue has gone very, very gray, other than in the corners, which are protected because there's some vignetting, they're not as bright. But we have here a good image that was predicted by the camera, and then this next one is blown out. Let's take a look at what Adobe Lightroom would tell us about this image. In this image with no adjustments, notice that there is no highlight warning for this image. And this is your first clue that in Adobe Lightroom, because it's a general histogram for all cameras, it's not going to tell you when you've clipped critical detail. If you see the highlight warning in Adobe Lightroom, you've definitely lost information. But if you don't see the highlight warning, that doesn't mean you actually got a good frame. So I wanna repeat that again. If you don't see a warning in Lightroom, it doesn't mean that your image is right. The camera did a better job of predicting the results. The only way of evaluating this exposure is by moving the exposure slider in Adobe. This is the best tool. If you wanna evaluate your exposure from the camera on your computer, use the exposure slider. So I'm gonna go back on this, undo that change. This was that comparable adjustment. We can see that loss of quality. So this is a very common scenario where I have a saturated color that's blown out. Adobe doesn't warn me, but I've lost that color. So I want to take my exposure slider and bring it to the left and I'm looking for, do I recover color and detail? And I can see that I've lost the color in this image. Let's go ahead and reset this. And let's look at some additional points and figure out where's the point where Lightroom would warn us. So the next shot here, obviously there's absolutely no color. We've overexposed now by two thirds of a stop and notice how quickly the highlights have punished us. Things look perfect here, two thirds of a stop later, they look completely gray and lifeless. There's no detail at all. If we turn off that adjustment, we can see that there is no highlight warning. And in fact, even though things look like they're clipped at the top, it's very hard to tell the difference between this histogram and going back to this histogram before we adjusted it. In both cases, look at how the right-hand side of that histogram is bunched up to the right. You cannot use this histogram to make critical decisions in Lightroom. Going to the next exposure here, let's turn off the adjustment. And again, no clear warning. We are now a full stop above the last good exposure and we still don't have a warning. Let's go to this next one turn it off and yep, now we have a warning. If I click on this, we can see these are the areas that we're now finding out from Lightroom are blown out. 
So we can see that we were a full stop overexposed with very significant loss of detail before we got any warning about this. Coming back here, look, there's just no detail. So you can ignore the histogram in Lightroom in many ways. What you want to look at is the exposure slider. So now let's go back to our real world image and make some determinations here. So I do like to leave this histogram warning on. I'm not saying that I won't look at it. I know for a fact that these are blown out, but remember the red channel clipping we saw on the camera predicted some loss of quality on the right here. And that's the difference between the, the clipping warning in Lightroom and the clipping warning in the camera. So I will leave this on because it tells me where things may be blown out and it warns me of egregious errors. You could also turn on the shadow warning if you want. Again, it's not going to necessarily tell you everything you need to know here, but it could be a helpful gauge for you as you work. Another way of using these warnings, if you want to have RGB information, you can hold down the Alt key as you drag the exposure slider and you'll see red, green, and blue colors here. The red is the red channel, the blue is the blue channel, and when you see other colors, yellow means that the red and the green are blown out at the same time, and white telling us all three channels are blown out. So if I hold down Alt on the exposure, highlights, or whites, the brighter parts of the image, that will give me this RGB preview of what's clipped in the highlights. If I hold down Alt on the shadows or the blacks, I'll get an RGB preview of what's clipped in the shadow parts of the image. So those can be helpful to look at those. I do like to, to use those when I'm trying to figure out how much I should try and recover highlights and pull things back. If I was gonna make an exposure adjustment, I'd go to there. Or if I was trying to do it with the highlights recovery tool, I'd probably bring it back into something like this. So those are helpful tools, but again, they're not gonna tell you when you've lost critical detail. There are only two ways that I know to do that in Lightroom. The first is by using an exposure slider and just bringing it down and looking for how do the highlights look or bringing it up and looking to see how the shadows look. The other way is to, let's reset these sliders, look at the LAB value. So up here in the histogram, as I move around the image, notice there's an LAB display. That's the lab color mode. The L is gonna range from zero to 100. When I'm at a completely blown highlight, I get 100. And when I'm at a completely blown shadow, I'll be somewhere around zero. The way that I like to use this is I know for at least this camera, values between about two in lightness and 98. So if L's between two and 98, then I generally trust that it's okay. So I can hover around this and I can see that, yeah, there's definitely some loss of quality here. Everything's like 100 and 99. Over here, I'm in the 80s. I feel pretty good. I know that there's some single channel clipping, but it's a, it's a pretty good rough guide to see where things are blown. If you look at those values, I find it's more accurate than just simply looking at the, the clipping warnings. But the best guide is definitely exposure. So let's zoom in and review the exposure for the highlights here. So as we zoom in and I bring down the exposure on this frame, we can see that we go five stops dark here. This is darker than it should be. And we can see that the color quality is a little bit lost. If I zoom over to the right, Let's bring this up to something a little more reasonable. This is a pretty nice looking orange sky. This over here is still decent, but it shouldn't look this way. This is the color of the sky, it's this orange. Here it's a little bit blown. So I'm gonna live with this, but this is how you can visualize that being lost. And obviously there's no value that's gonna recover these whites. It just gets to this awful gray when I go to the left, but there's no way of recovering it. So that's what a blown highlight looks like when you bring down the exposure slider. Let's take a look at what you get in a dark shadow. So if we zoom down to the bottom left of this image, that's where we have a lot of dark shadows and some good detail we can review. Let's go take a look at some of these cars here. So as we bring up the exposure, we see the detail in the cars and we see the noise in the shadows. This is the way that we want to evaluate this image is looking at is there acceptable detail and noise? But be careful, I've moved this five stops up. I don't wanna make my shadows this bright. It's an unrealistic way to evaluate the image. If you brighten it up too much, you're gonna find problems in the shadows. Only bring it up as far as you need to. So let's bring it down to more like three stops. This is much more reasonable. If I zoom back and look at the big picture, 
Notice that that's a very reasonable value for the shadows in this image, and that's the way I should make critical decisions. So I can still see some noise in the shadows here, but I haven't applied any noise reduction. If I go up to say like 25 or 30 some noise reduction, notice how the results improve quite a bit. Could I make this better with a brighter exposure? Absolutely. But this is plenty good detail and we'll jump over to Photoshop. We can make a real comparison under print conditions because the most challenging way I'm gonna use this image is as a 40 by 60 inch canvas. And that's the way I want to think about this image when I decide whether or not I have a good exposure. Because if I just wanna put this out to the web, I can use a lot more options than if I'm gonna make a super large print where every mistake is gonna be very visible. So here in Photoshop, we're gonna do some comparisons to look at the highlights and the shadows. This is not something I do for every image. I do all my evaluations typically in camera or Lightroom because it's very quick and easy. But this is something I would encourage you to do at least once or twice with your camera to try and understand the limits on the highlights and shadows because ultimately the best way to gauge things is going to be to, to do a direct comparison of your exposures at the proper viewing size. You can see on my ruler here, I've already resized this image to be 60 inches wide and 40 inches tall. This is the largest size I anticipate I'm likely going to print of this image. And so when I view it, I can zoom in until the ruler on the top of my screen is the same size in reality. So if I laid a ruler on my MacBook right now, I would see that one inch is the same as the width between 30 and 31 here. So this is the true size preview, and this is the right way to review the image looking for noise or other details, because if I can see noise on the screen here, then I'm gonna see noise in the print. And if I don't see noise in this screen, then I'm not going to see noise in the print. And there's no point in zooming in closer than you're going to print it because you're just gonna start finding problems that will never show up in real life. So now that we're kind of zoomed in here on the highlights, let's talk about what I've done. I have four different layers. These are the four different exposures I shot of the scene, all corrected to be the same brightness as the dark exposure. So this is the dark exposure I used to actually process the image unadjusted. This is an exposure that was one stop brighter. I didn't use this exposure, but I've taken the camera raw, I made it a negative one adjustment in camera raw, and I've exported. So these are the same essential values in the image coming from two different starting points. So this is twice the exposure as this image, but I did minus one exposure on it. So they look the same here. We'll just evaluate what happened to the highlights. Here we have two stops overexposed and corrected back to the, the dark exposure, three stops overexposed and corrected back to the dark exposure. So let's take a look at what happens to our highlights when we overexpose. So this is our selected image. And remember that we had already blown the highlights here a bit, but within what we consider to be acceptable limits, let's see what happens if we go a little further. At one stop overexposed, I can see that the fringing of the sun looks this nasty yellow color looking from the correct exposure to the overexposed, I don't like what's happening in the image. And this is what a truly overexposed highlight looks like for this image. I could deal with the center of the sun being blown out because it's not something you can recover. But these fringe areas, once they start to go to this nasty yellow, I don't think that looks very nice. And so to me, that's why this is already an unacceptable exposure, even at one stop over. And we saw from the blue sky portion of the demo that even a third of a stop can really blow your highlights. If we go to two stops, now things look really horrendous. There's no way that I can easily correct that. And three stops, it's even worse. There's just, there's no detail here at all. So this is why you really need to control the highlights in your image and why that camera predicted value is the, the right one here. Now let's take a look at the shadows. I've done the same thing uh, in reverse. So I've made all the exposures equivalent to the brightest exposure. So this is my bright exposure. The exposure I actually use is one down here where I had to lighten it by three stops for the purposes of this comparison. But we're gonna look into the shadows and see what happened with our shadows and how much benefit would we get if we were to shoot additional exposures. So at this point, I'm zoomed in really close for you to be able to see the results online but between seven and eight here, this is much more than one inch. If I want a true comparison, I should be at this level of zoom. This is on my 15 inch MacBook. 
this is the proper sizing to be reviewing. This is the way I should look at noise if I'm gonna make critical decisions. But for the purposes of this review, I'm gonna zoom in so you can see any issues. So here's our overexposed image that shows the highlights very clean, lots of detail. If we turn this off, now we're looking at the one-stop adjustment. This is one stop of correction in the shadows. And there's a little bit of noise from before to after. Look in the, the side panels of the door. You can see that noise. Now, I've not applied any noise reduction, so I could certainly clean this up. And this is a very acceptable result. At two stops, there's a little bit more noise, but again, very good detail, and I could clean it up. At three stops, now the noise has started to jump a fair bit more. Keep in mind now, we've moved three stops. That's the equivalent of shooting this portion of the image at ISO 800, because I shot the overall image at ISO 100, but when I boost three stops in the shadows, I've moved it to two, four, 800 ISO. So we should expect noise that looks like ISO 800. But I haven't yet applied noise reduction. If we turn on the noise reduction at 35 in Lightroom, this is the result you would see. So looking at the unadjusted image versus the three stop boost, Yep, there's definitely a difference. The hubcaps show more detail, the door handles show more detail. There's a little bit more detail in these parts of the road. So there's no question that there is the potential to increase the quality if I had a brighter exposure here. But do I need it? Absolutely not. And let's zoom back to the proper level of detail and look at the before and after. And the differences here are so minuscule, I can barely detect them on screen here. I can guarantee you by the time I print it, especially on canvas, no one would know the difference. So this is a very acceptable result. Now let's take a look a little bit beyond that. I took an additional exposure. This is not the most scientific comparison because this was a different bracket in the sequence taken a little bit later. And you'll see when I activate this one that now the street lamps are on, the color's a little different. But this will just give you a rough sense of what happens when you push beyond three stops. So this is four and a third stop correction and notice the jump in noise here. There's quite a bit more noise. If we turn on our noise reduction, it gets a little bit better, but looking at the original versus this noisier version, there's definitely a little more loss of quality. So even at four stops, well beyond what I did, I would live with this result. I would blend if I could here, but I really don't need to, and that's why the shadows are just so forgiving in your images. So to just bring things home, guys, here's the raw image that I took and ultimately processed. And I knew from reviewing the playback on the back of my camera that the highlights were just barely on the fringes, but they're gonna be okay. And the highlights were recoverable within three stops. So I had great confidence in the field that I'd be able to come back and process an image that looked like this. And that's how we go about evaluating the highlights and shadows to find the proper exposure in the field. And lastly, I've got a free ebook available for you guys at the link below. Download that to get a written recap of all the key points we've discussed in this video in terms of how to nail the proper exposure. If you've enjoyed this, please leave your thumbs up and comments below. And let me know if you have any requests for future tutorials and I'll try and do my best.